Right. So we'll start off with the transport logistic systems. And in today's class, we discuss uh, the most known topic of the last semester. It is modalities, intermodalities, road, rail, maritime, intermodal, especially the infrastructure and logistics corridors. So this is especially for you, my dear students and young researchers, and you can reach me at dr.christoran at the rate of gmail.com. So before beginning the session, once again, let me thank God for giving me this opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national, international participants, students and young researchers. Right. So in this class, we discuss about the terminals, especially with the intermodal, how, what are the principles of understanding the terminals. Then we understand, we characterize the modular shape of the terminals. Then especially in Europe, we will understand the intermodal terminals. Okay. So what are the basic functions and of course the additional services with the combined transport terminals. Okay. Then what are the three parts of the intermodal shipment? What are the three reasons to convert your truckload freight into rail transport? Okay. And uh, when to get the intermodal rail? What are the characteristics of the uh, ISP? Intermodal Service Provider Model. Okay. Then we discuss about some definitions. Blocking and bracing. Drayage and drayman. Okay. So that we will be discussing. Okay. So at uh, in the Google Classroom, I have already given the uh, assignments. Please complete them. We have just got one more week. Just got one more week and after that, I, I suppose there will be final exams. Okay. So at regular intervals, I will be giving you some short videos to discuss the knowledge in our topics. Right. So when you discuss about like terminal, it's of course, it is a very key, most important part of the intermodal transport chain because you are going for both reliable, reliable efficient and of course safe interchange between road transport rail transport and of course other transport modes whether you take in the case of inland waterway uh, short sea shipping including ferry drive that is underwater submarine uh, shipping even okay so we have like different types of transport so the information on the intermodal terminals are, is actually required by this intermodal operators so the customers of this intermodal transport services and of course the interested community of the intermodal supporters as well so there are several information source of information that exists so that exists at the intermodal terminal owners and operators themselves the ports are maybe the logistic centers in which the terminals are located and the companies to whom the terminals belong to what are the region or maybe countries in which they are located and intermodal operators are maybe other institutions organizations as well okay. So every sources will be providing you know set of information. It has its own you know template or maybe format, and you have the actuality principle as well. Okay, so you have to the the challenge is to provide a single access to the uniform uh, information that is available on the intermodal transport terminals. So if you consider most of the European countries, the terminals are going to differentiate between ownership of the terminal infrastructure and of course the superstructure. Okay, so that is how you are going to manage. So the ownership is all about ownership of the land, infrastructures, maybe like rail tracks, superstructures, maybe like rail mounted gantry cranes or maybe reach stackers as well. So we'll have, you know, the different modes of transportation. So when you deal with the, you know, the management, it's all about how you try to manage the daily operation of the terminal. Okay. So that is done by the owner or maybe specific dedicated operational company but to understand the terminals we should have a better understanding of the principle of non-discriminative access to the terminals okay at least for those who have received that public funding okay from the government so rail uh, side access also is also available for the licensed uh, railway undertakings as well roadside access also for all the operators so transparent capacity allocation of course pricing even so you have to uh, make a good understanding about this uh, you know terminal process okay the bundling of different cargos may be like maritime container continental cargos and market segments as well maybe like international domestic relations and that will how uh, you improve the capacity utilization okay so uh, the type of the terminal even is our own entity in the transport chain. So you are going to analyze with respect to legal, corporate and financial sectors even that exists between the terminal operating company 
the terminal owner, the infrastructure manager, the railway undertakings, and of course the intermodal operators. That leads to you know the variety of owner or maybe operator model so this is how you try to improvise the functions of course the services okay for the intermodal terminals when you take the intermodal transport of course it's an expensive one compared to others but definitely it's a most reliable one okay so the capacity of the combined uh, transport terminal is actually determined by a number of factors we will have be influenced by the local terminal manager the primary is all about uh, you know how you will determine the portion of the terminal within the rail and of course the road network the size and shape of the real estate the length of the handling tracks and of course the number and uh, capabilities of the uh, material handling equipment mhd okay so in recent years even the modular shape of the terminals even has been developed like if we will have like one or maybe better double-sided rail access as well signaling that is going to allow for entry with you know momentum and of course direct departure of the train by main line traction unit okay three to five train long handling or maybe transshipment tracks or maybe rmg rail mounted gantry cranes okay two or three interim storage or maybe buffer planes so we'll have uh, you know these features that has been developed in the terminal so that is actually you know uh, improvising the shape of the terminals okay and we have like one loading and maybe one driving lane road lane access with like check-in check-out area okay sufficient parking space that is available okay so that's one type of example is would be like handling about 120 to 150 thousand loading units okay so that is for the rail in and rail out handlings okay so that is going to improvise the capacity okay so we'll have like rail terminals like on dock near dock transmodal terminal load center satellite terminal okay and we'll have distribution centers like transloading cross docking warehousing so everything has been utilized in the you know spacious parking space here okay so these are uh, the intermodal terminals in europe like we'll have something for the road access check-in check-out area okay handling transshipment tracks okay interim storage space loading and driving lanes parking tracks are avail also available same way we'll have rail access even okay so this is how we'll go with different uh, modes in a particular section okay so the intermodal terminals are definitely going to you know fulfill the interface portion in the intermodal supply chain so this is what you are going to satisfy cater to the basic functions and needs which are related to both rail and road transit okay and whatever intermodal terminal that you are going to match into of course you are going to provide additional services where you will make own of the uh, terminal operator so that maybe or maybe may not be uh, going to offer the local demand services for them okay so definitely that's going to be a smooth transmission across several functions and what are the basic needs what you have to require from the intermodal terminal operator okay so whether they offer the required services to the supply chain that is being connected maybe if you take in the case of intermodal operators trucking companies those who are connected so they are offering the required services so these are the basic functions and additional services of the combined transport terminals okay so we'll have transshipment of loading units between like road rail inland navigation and then we'll have terminal handling equipment especially for checking in checking out security check we'll be having then intermediate buffer especially for loading units and of course vehicles agency function for railways and operators and storage of loading units as well temperature control especially with the case of dangerous goods tracking service container repair customer service everything we are providing you know basic as well as additional services then we go for intermodal shipping okay so that's uh, transportation of freight using different modes okay as, as we know intermodal between different modes okay so you can include like different modes maybe ocean transport rail truck and maybe air even especially if you take in the case of north america you define intermodal okay to be a combination of trucks and railroads to move freight in the shipping containers what you call to be the containerized freight okay so unlike the uh, ftl full truck load shipping okay which involves one carrier which moves a load from maybe a point of origin to the destination so your intermodal load will be having three parts okay in three separate carriers so these are the thing road rail and road uh, road rail and 
the uh, drainage that will be used okay so first one the road okay it's a intermodal driver what you call to be the drayman or maybe drayage carrier so he or she is going to pick up the empty container okay from the original rail ramp and bring it to the shipper okay so once the drayman is actually loaded at that shipper they will be returning to the container to the rail ramp okay second one rail okay so rail road is going to take the container from the original rail ramp to the destination rail ramp then of course the uh, work of the drayman and the uh, destination drayage carrier so the destination drayage carrier is going to pick up the container from the ramp and it is going to deliver the shipment to the receiver okay so we'll have you know road rail road communication okay like a specialized intermodal driver uh, drayman is going to take okay to it's going to load at the shipper okay they are going to return the container to the rail ramp and this rail the rail road is going to take the container from the original rail ramp to the destination rail ramp and road the destination drayage carrier is going to pick the container from the ramp and it is going to deliver it to the receiver okay right. so compared to the you know shipping we'll have you know some characteristics even we'll have three reasons to convert the truckload freight into the rail okay one is cost savings so shippers definitely use intermodal especially to protect their budgets okay so when the savings is going to vary okay across the different lanes so seasonality the demand and of course the state of the current truckload market often plays a vital role okay in the cost savings if not thousands even like uh, even several dollars cheaper even than the truckload that you are eff efficiently managing okay so even in lanes also when where uh, intermodal is only marginally less expensive on a per load basis okay so definitely even small small savings can actually add okay then sustainability so on the average rail shipping is four times more fuel efficient than the truckload that you are using okay so a train can move one ton of freight okay 479 miles on a single gallon okay so that is the advantage so even if you are going for the greenhouse effect also it's much more supporting as well okay so you are going to re reduce the greenhouse gas emissions as well so a fully loaded intermodal train takes about 280 trucks of the road okay that is not congesting the air and of course the highway so that's the advantage and capacity will have uh, supply chain disruptions as well maybe from minor incidents to macro economic trends as well okay so if you try to inter uh, incorporate this intermodal thing okay in your supply chain strategy so you are going to you know diversify your capacity you are going to reduce the reliance especially the dependency on the truckload market okay so depending on the state of the truckload cycle so capacity is not always easy okay so intermodal unlocks also are entirely a different source of carrier and of course the equipment capacity as well okay. so how you are going to find you know intermodal uh, conversion opportunities in your network so we categorize the total lane distance okay so we will have the proximity of origin and of course the destination points to all the rail ramps then the current truckload rates you are going to identify the rail service routing okay what are the underlying requirements of the shipment okay so the best way in order to finally optimize your network and of course to find the conversion opportunity is how you deal with the experience in a model provider so he or she they will actually simplify the process okay and make your intermodal shipping experience definitely as equal as compared to your truckload shipping okay so if the lane maybe let us take an example is longer than 500 miles and you can ship it in a 53 inch like dry van okay so it's, it's a way you go for the intermodal conversion okay so we'll have the same thing okay so, so 500 miles 53 inch uh, dry van okay for 100 miles the origin and destination are within the 100 miles of the intermodal run so this is the case okay so there are four types of intermodal carriers and how you have to choose a provider okay so shippers cannot directly go to the railroads in order to move the intermodal freight 
okay so they should in between they should go for the intermodal service provider so there are like different types of carriers that the shippers can choose from everything has its own pros and cons okay so every shipper will have to decide which type is actually suitable for their business and especially for their supply chain okay so maybe you can use a specific uh, thing also or maybe you are go going for a mixed thing also okay so maybe we'll have like intermodal service provider model isp model okay asset carrier intermodal marketing company asset life and then reseller okay so asset carrier will get to use the own containers use own trade operations intermodal uh, marketing company get to use the railroad containers network of trade carriers asset life will get to access most of them like railroad containers use uh, network of drayage carriers use own containers but reseller not direct access okay. then you have non asset based intermodal carriers okay so it's also called as imc intermodal marketing companies that we have seen so they are the third party uh, logistics so that is going to maintain the contracts especially with the class 1 type of freight routes okay so imcs are going to rely on the railroads shared pool of like 100000 containers okay advantages it is going to offer like good uh, flexibility and of course access to the railroad equipment pool okay and of course a wider drayage community as well you can get access to all types of freight like maybe truck load less than truck load and maybe intermodal as well but cons definitely dependent on the railroad for the cost and equipment okay and then we'll have asset based uh, intermodal carriers as well so we'll have like own uh, fleet of intermodal containers and we'll have like trucks drivers charges yards even okay so they will have the advantage of uh, you know high degree of control over the cost and equipment what we saw as, a, as the disadvantage of the previous method okay but the cons it's the physical presence of the assets okay they do not cover all the lanes they they try to avoid even you know certain lanes based on the network balance then asset light network uh, intermodal carriers so we will get access to the uh, railroads equipment pool okay so but also we will have their own intermodal assets as well okay so the advantage is what we enjoyed over the earlier two methods okay so will have you know truckload brokerage as well so that are not actual uh, intermodal marketing companies okay so they do not have like direct relationship especially with the railroads so they rely on the asset carriers and of course imcs in order to move the intermodal loads uh, the advantages uh, let us take in the case the shipper is already working with the reseller for the truckload so they do not have to add another vendor but the cons so they have to add another layer of margin to the shipper okay so that inability to secure the committed uh, rail pricing inability to source their own equipment no control over the drayage operations and of course very very less uh, visibility to the shipments in transit okay so these are some of the definitions that you should go through okay blocking and raising of course you know intermodal transportation of course it's a smooth and steady but the container will be you know you are using like cranes for lifting and you you will have like gentle vibrations from hundreds of miles of rail tracks okay everything will be causing the pilot to uh, to shift okay so in order to prepare you know the freight for the intermodal uh, transportation ship the shippers will be using you know several pallets in practice maybe uh, for safety purposes okay for blocking and bracing okay so what you are going to do you are going to fill the empty space with some dunnage some air bags or maybe honeycomb void fillers as well then load bars or maybe load locks and maybe uh, two cross force um, nail in the uh, container floor as well okay so even though the shippers are actually responsible especially for blocking and then bracing how you are going to fill that empty space with that air bags so there is no need you know to the, that uh, you have to build the port in the container and maybe railroad and maybe like a intermodal provider as well for a loading plant so that's it okay and then you have drayage what we saw okay drayage drayman okay so drayage it's also called as the road portion of the intermodal shipment okay so the trucking portion okay of the intermodal shipment will be taking the freight from the shipper 
to the rail at the origin and from the rail to the receiver at the destination so maybe you will have like a driver with just a truck maybe like a, a driver with a power unit or maybe a tractor hooking up to a chassis or maybe container combo and driving it to a very very short distance usually like within 100 miles okay so rail will be uh, a start and maybe an end start and stop at the end of model terminal or maybe a port or maybe a C or maybe a add. Then we'll have draymen. Okay, so they are specialized carriers that are going to handle this drayage containers. Okay, so they are going to operate in and out of the rail terminals and of course ports in the particular metro area. Okay, so we'll have like standard full truck uh, load carriers as well are not allowed to enter the intermodal facilities. Compared to FTL, your drayage carrier base is much more smaller and you are going to uh, get a limit on the pickup capacity. Even. Then we have per deem. You, you can call it as a demurrage. Okay, it's, it's actually a small daily fee that is applied to the containers when they are not in the train. Okay, so you, the intermodal uh, provider even will definitely will try to cover it, or maybe that one uh, additional rate even they will try to add it. Okay, so the shipper will not actually see the charge. Okay, so however, it's very much important that you have to understand how your intermodal provider approaches in India accessorial schedule that they are maintaining.